Alright, let me do a quick review of this new discovery that I have found. The secret to our gravity field. The reason why everything is possible. Gravity is the frequencies highest and lowest on the spectrum. All light, sound, and magnetism all flow through the same field of gravity. And now I discovered that all these historical sites, Stonehenge, uh, Easter Island, all these other areas where they built these rock found formations, that um, they used uh, the Fibonacci and Pi and all that stuff like they did with the Giza pyramids to create a gravitational field. Because as you notice, you see these same designs everywhere you look. Everywhere you look, you see one, two, three, one, two, three. You see the exact pattern in all these. And rather than thinking that some mysterious, that for some mysterious reason they decided to build these, these, these walls and buildings and just the way that they did is kind of makes sense if you think about it as a gravitational field that they don't want us to know about because we're all sheep. We're all on a big hill. And they don't want us to go they don't want us to go down the hill, the mountain, and find out that the world isn't floating in the middle of nowhere and we're not as small as a grain of salt. Or sand in a big ocean. Solving these things. The, these rocks that have these uh T's put in them, rather than thinking that they're for holding the rocks together, if this were a magnetic field, if these were the right minerals. Where the two rocks come together, you're going to have a field that overlaps the other one. And the only way to get rid of that field and turn them into the same field is to put a metal bar in between the two. So that solves that mystery. Then underneath the ocean, they have these things that they claim fish build, but that looks exactly like a magnetic field against some kind of metal particles. And then these lines that they find next to these animal drawings happen to be lined up exactly with the Giza Pyramid to all these other historical sites. And that's probably why nothing can grow on them because there's some kind of field on, in, or below where these lines are going. These H's that we find on in almost all these places are um, designed very uniquely that they all form together exactly perfect so that it would create, if these were magnets, it, they would create a field on one side. And then these rocks that are floating across the desert that we have no idea why they're sliding are most likely because of the magnetic, the magnetic field, the gravity field. The magnet is pulling it and that's why they're sliding. And that's the reason that these are built. This is the pi ratio, the golden ratio. Rather than putting it in the center, it's off a little bit because that makes the infinite loop. You can do it again and again and again. And what it does is it takes the energy from the ground and it shoots it up into the sky. And that's what gives us our field. That's what creates the sun and the moon. Here's the Giza pyramid. And these are where they all line up. They all line up on one of these lines. I can bet if you were to do the golden ratio in a spiral around here, you'd probably find a bunch more sites. And here it is. If you were to follow this exact path, you would probably see exactly where it is or where a bunch more sites are.
sides, learning to describe the rotational speed of the Earth per second and remember one pendulum, uh, one metre pendulum clock connecting to the Egyptian royal cubit, pi over six. Well, that same knowledge will extend, so if you multiply that maximum visible base by 86,400, we get the circumference of the Earth. Uh, this is much uh, more elegant than the traditional way, which is to use 43,200. This is over the top. This would be the sky. Not what this guy's saying. distance all the way around it if this is the upwards if this is our sky this is the ground around and the exact distance is this that's a troidal field creation rather than rather than just thinking that the Egyptians were so smart and they knew the size of the whole earth and they knew exactly where the, all the stars and how to get this to line up within like millicentimeters of each other rather than thinking that they were that precise in their measurements it seems to make a little more sense that maybe these things are the reason we get these measurements Maybe we're not really floating in space in the middle of nowhere. Maybe we're on the top of a mountain. And so long as our compasses are only letting us go within this circle, then nobody's boat would ever travel outside the circle to go down the hill. There'd be no way that they could ever find down there. So I think it would make a little more sense that they're putting us in like a cage, a zoo, putting us in an area that we can't leave. And that's the reason our mathematics, that's the reason Einstein wasn't able to put everything together. Because when you add gravity into everything, it, it throws every single equation off if it's a man-made force. Therefore, light and sound and everything else would then go with it. Because with no gravity, none of that other stuff can exist. Because they're all within the fre same frequencies. We're sheep up on a mountain. Listen to this guy. They joke about it. Um, right, whales without sheep. Yeah, no, interesting question. Very good question. Um, I mean, the first thing to realize is there's been massive change, you know, and like the farmers will constantly tell you oh, it's always been like this. But no, it's, it's been entirely driven by either the market or by the subsidies of people, you know. Before, I mean, we go back a couple of generations, they had cattle, they were growing oats, they were growing barley in the hills, um, they had geese in the hills, all sorts of stuff going on. Stop your floods down. 
floods downstream or some kind of irrigation system for them. Flood and drought. Okay, now this guy is going to talk about the results of how the magnetic field from the Earth affects the human brain. Right. Now this guy's going to talk about how the all well, this guy's talking about how to make light from gravity vibrations, but this is what the Giza pyramid does. My conclusion, at least. Looks like the Giza Pyramid inside, huh?
you went to these pyramids and actually seen what was happening, that cavity would get filled up with light. Infrared light. That's why we can't see it. That's exactly what they do. That's exactly what the pyramids are for. That's how the sun and the sky, or the sun and the moon, are put up there. It's infrared. So you can't see it. So, yeah. That's the gravitational field. The thing that we don't know, we don't know where it is. There's background noise that our telescopes pick up on. They think is everywhere in the galaxy. They're everywhere that exists is wrong. That means if if they if we can't if we can't get past that background noise, we've never seen past our own gravitational field. Therefore, outer space isn't true. Oh yeah. What made the phenomenon so exciting was the temperature of this star in the jar. On its surface alone, the light burns at tens of thousands of degrees. And Sam Cutter now contemplated a tantalizing possibility. Could the core of the collapsing bubble be even hotter? Hot enough for fusion? Oh. 
stars. Look at this. Look at the stars. Tiny bubbles. Stars are as big as grains of sand. I'm not okay. kidding you. Fraudulent astronomy is in big trouble. You are either, you astronomer, are either a fool or a liar. Now, if you're a fool, there's a little bit of grace for you because you didn't know. You're just stupid ignorant. But if you're a liar, you're in big trouble because you've been deceiving the public. To face me at judgment time. You liars. You know that the stars are up in the middle of the concave earth in a celestial sphere, a literal celestial crystalline sphere that contains water, it contains a celestial ocean. And the stars are created by a process called multi bubble sun luminescence. Stars are small when they're white, white dwarfs, look at this, multi bubble sun luminescence, or bluish. And when they're bigger, they get red. That's why you call them red giants, isn't it? Yeah, it is. When they implode, they get blue. When they explode, they get red. <coughs> Look at this. You guys have been found out. You frauds. You frauds. Shame on you. Judgment's coming to you, people. How dare you? How dare you say that? So the truth is revealed. We need to get together and unite, or else we're going to be all killed by the elite or whoever is in control of this game. This is coming to an end soon. So like and share this video with everybody every day.